So what about your back? On uh, Monday, we did deadlift, and this is a 3-2-1 week, so it was max weight, max reps. And uh, I got, it was 300 pounds, which isn't a ton, Jeez. I guess, but for a deadlift, it's a lot, I guess. But uh, I got one up just fine, and then halfway through the second one, it was, like, weird on my finger. And it, like, hurt, because 300 pounds on your fingers hurts. And... Uh, <laughs> And so I set it down and tried to adjust my grip and pick it up right away. I don't know why I feel the need to rush through it, but tried to do it right away. And I sprained like my back, like I sprained it. I, I didn't know you, could, I guess you could sprain anything. And I sprained my back <laughs> and uh, so all week, I just fucking limping around like an old man. It's just miserable. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I saw the chiropractor today and he's, He's he's thorough, and uh, yeah. So whatever. Uh, plan to get back at it next week. Um, pro- next week is a deload week, so it's already lightweight, so I should be okay. Yeah. Welcome to Border Outdoors podcast. I'm Mac. I'm Seth. I'm Scott. Ah. Uh, Scott with the gimpy back. Scott with the gimpy, <laughs> gimpy back. <laughs> at first, when when Mac asked you how you hurt your back, I thought you were gonna say from carrying this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, lost 30 pounds. Look at his <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about um, today on the way home from work, we had to stop at uh, was it called Monticello Nutrition? Yeah, right. Um, in Monticello, and we got like a post workout protein shake, and then oh no, I don't even know what this... oh, spilled half your Scooby snack. Yeah, I don't even know what's in it, but it's called a Scooby snack, and it's supposed to be like. Has a lot of energy and whatever else in it, and it it's fucking good. That's all I know. It's delicious, and it's green. Yeah, yeah. It looks like look not Mountain Dew. What was that? What Surge? Remember Surge? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It That's tastes it like, like it. Ta- have you ever had that old uh, Jolt? Yeah. Oh, Jolt the no, blue. No, no, that Jolt shit came out when I was in sixth grade. So you guys weren't even fucking born. But I remember I, never even heard of it. I remember drinking it um when I was. Like in seventh grade, my brothers used to always, and you used to open it and go, like it was a big can, but the blue one was always the best. Huh. That's what, this stuff reminds me of drinking that blue jolt. That, that's this, so good. I got a two liter of that stuff when I was a kid. And uh, for a field trip, I was bouncing off the walls. It's funny because I got one of those uh, like maybe four or five years ago. I, uh, I, didn't, I got shit for sleep and I had a work meeting. And so I get up in the morning. And I stopped at the gas station. I grabbed a five-hour energy. I'd never had one before. It was like grape flavor. And I was like, shit, yeah, I'll try that. And so I take down this five-hour energy. And then I go to a sales meeting. And that guy has not talked to us since. I guess I was just a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Stop is good. You should do more. <laughs> just like insane. And I was like, yeah, okay. Note to self, nothing new on race day, as the marathon runners say. Well, don't try a five-hour energy before a sales meeting. That's probably no. a good idea. No. Ugh. <laughs> but I, I haven't had one of those in forever. Have I've never, I've one? never had one. I Boy. bought, I bought, um, well, we were driving back from camping or something one time. I was super tired, like falling asleep and she was sleeping in the passenger seat. So I'm like, I gotta get something. And she yells at me for buying like monsters or whatever. Don't drink that crap. Drink coffee. Well, it was like 95 degrees. I'm not getting a coffee. And they had a sale on the five hour energy. It was like mm-hmm. two for six bucks. <laughs> so I get two of those as I'm getting back in the car. I, she saw that they're in my hand. Yep. And I got reamed worse what? for having those five hour energies than like going to get a monster. <laughs> she made me go back in and return them. I'm like, no, I'm not going to come on. Six <laughs> no you, oh, yeah. I was like, it was, wasn't even worth it. I went right back into the store and returned it. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. That is hilarious. I'm uh, scarred. Can't, I can't believe you went in and returned it. Like, Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, dude. Six bucks is six bucks. That was back then. That was a. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I, I'm, I, I will cower with my tail between my legs for my old lady, like, like nobody else. But if she ever said, "Go in the store and return that," because I don't want you to drink it, I, I would stare her in the eyes and <laughs> guzzle it down. Like number one, because I hate returning stuff. 
Number two, just the audacity. Like, well, it was in the early years. Oh yeah, I hear you. It was I in hear the you. Early, yep. We weren't even engaged or married. I, I think we were like three years in at that point. Yep. I was like, whatever. I'd rather. I was tired, crabby, and just wanted to get home. And whatever puts her back to sleep was fine. Right. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the donut story? Oh no. <laughs> so, uh, so once uh, her and I had been dating for probably a couple of years at this point, and it was just a Saturday morning, and. Uh, <laughs> we go to the uh, grocery store to get gas. It's like a Coburn. So there's a gas station there. I pump gas. I go inside to pay. And I'm like, oh, dude, love donuts. Get a couple Long Johns for us. And um, uh, I get back in the car and I put the bag in between us. And I'm like, I take out a donut <laughs> and I start driving. I go, got, I got you a donut. And apparently she was not feeling great about herself and wanted to try to eat better. I didn't know any of this. <laughs> And she didn't tell me this, and her reaction was not, oh, sorry, I can't have it. I'm on a diet. It was, oh, my gosh, do we really need donuts? That was her reaction. <laughs> so I looked at her, and then without looking, I rolled the window down and chuck her donut out the window, and I grabbed the other one and just started eating it. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck, lady? So <laughs> she's like, sorry, sorry. I'm like, well, your donut's gone now. Too late. <laughs> So yeah, that's the donut story. <laughs> uh, not the you know, donut story. Because I have a similar story. One day, a few years ago, I was driving down the road and I was gonna fucking donut hit my windshield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, one time we were going on a Valley Scare one time, and it was my brother Mitch and and Cody and a bunch of us, and then there's like all Mariah's friends, Michaela and Caitlin, and that was when the My- Miley Cyrus came out. And this is after Hannah Montana. So, like, everyone, they were free. She listened to that CD over and over and over and over. <laughs> so, we're, they were driving us, and we're in the back seat. No, we, I was driving, and they're in the back seat. And all of a sudden, Mitch's like, what's in the CD player? I said, it's that Miley Cyrus CD. And, he, and, he, and I had, like, you know, the big briefcase full of CDs. Yep. And he's looking through them. He's like, do you like this CD? It's like an old burnt one. I'm like, no. He goes, I'm going to throw it out the window. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so they're listening to the Miley Cyrus. And then all of a sudden, he hits the eject button, grabs the CD, and then throws the other one out the window. Oh, <laughs> you, oh If you want to see three chicks in their early 20s when that first came out, freak <laughs> out. Like, and they, like, they just started instantly screaming. And yelling, ah! and Mitch is like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got it right here. <laughs> like, I'm like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> oh, oh my god, it was it's a so great funny. prank. He wasn't even trying to do it. No, that was so funny. He just grabbed it and just whoo, right out the window. <laughs> she probably would have made me go back and dig oh, in the sure. grass for and sure. something else for it. And if it's scratch, you're buying a new one. <laughs> oh, yeah, Miley Cyrus. All right, well, um, let's get right to it. If we haven't already. It's spring. <laughs> it Not is right spring. It. Uh, and what is what is spring? What happens in the spring, Seth? Well, you clean your house and you... No, I don't look forward to you that. You line up your lawn care service. It's and... mating season. <laughs> oh, mating season for many a birds. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. So get out there and watch your ducks. And uh, turkey hunting. Turkey oh, hunting. Oh, we could do turkey hunting, but I was thinking there's a big thing that, speaking of ducks... Yeah. And in the spring... Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of DU banquets. Yeah, the annual Buffalo yep. Spring Banquet. Yes, that is coming up April 18th. So that's Monday, April 18th. So probably just shy of a week from when this episode will air, yeah, most likely. Six days. Yeah, so if you guys are in the Buffalo, Minnesota area, sign up and uh, come on out to the banquet. We're going to have all the usual guns, raffles, food, dinner. Um, so, I, so I probably uh, asked this before, Seth. So, mm-hmm. what do you do with these banquets? Is there like a featured speaker? Or is it just kind of dinner and shooting nope, shit it's, amongst it's, a it, bunch of hunters? That's exactly what it is. It's dinner and games and raffles. Uh, we we don't try to bore anybody with a giant speech about conservation and waterfall. And like our regional director, if he's there, will give maybe a, a three to five minute talk while people are eating on. Well, here's some local projects that might be going on or stuff in the state, or here's how DU's doing as a whole, but very little of that. Most of it's just uh, as many people as we can get in the door talking about whatever they want to talk about and playing raffles and games and auctioning on items and 
it's really laid back. So right it's on. a lot. They're a lot of fun. And then usually when I go, it's <clears throat> me. Oh, it, well, we went last year. Tim came with, but I don't think Tim's going this year. Um, but it was just us sitting at the table with the Brotherhood guys, just shooting the shit, <laughs> just drinking beer. Yep. The food's usually always really good. This year it's steak and cordon bleu. Mm-hmm. Oh, so well, you have yeah, a yeah, combo meal. You want to eat? Yeah. Really? And, yeah, it's Damn. fun, man. You you walk around at these events and like, like generally speaking, there's there's ten things going on right away, right? There's ten different raffles or games, and then a whole list of silent auction items. So like, you can go around. Let's say you bring, let's just say you bring a hundred bucks to spend on games. You go around, you play this game, you get a ticket for that one and that one and this one and that one, and then you can just go sit at your table, wait for dinner, have some drinks, BS, and then every now and then when we sell out a game, we're like, okay. If you if you got a ticket in on this game, listen up. Then we'll draw the winner of that game and move on to the next one. So, like, you can do you can do all your games and playing in the first ten minutes, or you can sprinkle it out throughout the night and and then you get, go at your own pace. And then you always have like raffles where you come around, and it's like okay for five bucks you can buy a ticket that goes. I think there was like a Ducks Unlimited sign or a Bush Light beer sign or something yeah. last year, and you throw your name. It's it's like almost like a meat raffle pay five bucks get a ticket and only so many people oh, can get right the on. ticket and then yep. you're just like okay and you just keep doing that and then you're sitting here having fun talking to your buddies and then you're having your beers are going down here comes dinner and you're just waiting for like the big prize of are you gonna win the gun or the yeti right. cooler or like the general raffle <clears throat> wherever you put your ticket in it's like oh i really want that so i'm gonna take five of my tickets and throw it into that. Right. Because I really want that. And you just wait and look at your tickets and see what you want. We have, uh, yeah, it varies from there's games that cost $5 to play it, or there's games that cost upwards as much as $50 to play it. So basically, like for the gun of the year, really expensive shotgun, rifle, or pistol. Uh, um, really, really nice guns. You get your choice of one of those guns if you win. And so we'll sell. Fifty dollar raffle tickets for that, but we only sell fifty tickets. Yeah. So, you know, you you can spend a lot on that one if you want to shell out two hundred bucks to get four tickets on that game, or for twenty bucks you can play the smaller scale games. You know, and, and again, those games often have a gun to win and stuff too. There's just more people playing them because they're cheaper. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's a good time. If you've never been to one, try it. They're all they're all similar. I think ours is a good one. Yeah. If you go to ours, it, there's there's some that definitely are not as good as ours, but um, it's a good time. So if you can't make it, you can still support us. You can still go on the du.org website, uh, look up events, find Minnesota, Buffalo Ducks Unlimited chapter. You can donate to the event mm-hmm. just as a donation. That'd be awesome. Go ahead and donate. And if you could put in the comments, like on behalf of Border Outdoors or thanks to Border Outdoors, that'd be awesome just so they know where – where you guys heard about it from and um yeah should be a good time yeah and i think right. it was 65 bucks for my ticket to get in and that's your membership yep your membership so you get the magazine what is it once every three months once every two months <clears throat> once yep. every two months so you get six magazines and then that goes to dinner and all that stuff too yeah you get your your meal uh membership and all that good stuff yeah it's it's not I've gone there before and spent twenty dollars. Yep. And I've gone there before and spent a hundred dollars yep. after I bought it. It's right. Whatever you want to do, you don't. You're not pressured to do anything. It's just a bunch of people, like Scott said, hunters, and you just sit around and you meet new people and you sit and BS with them. And mm-hmm. next thing you know, you're like, oh, I know Jim from over here. Or, you know, it's like kind of like a small world, like at right. all of them. So it's right. really cool. Can I uh, can I ask a a stupid question? I guess. Uh, I always say there's no stupid questions. There's only stupid people who ask <laughs> questions. But um, Seth, you kind of touched on it with uh, the guy comes up and he doesn't bore you with talk about conservation and whatnot. But I guess uh, for me personally, I don't really know anything about Ducks Unlimited. So this is a banquet that goes to support Ducks Unlimited, which does what? You know, what is the elevator pitch for Ducks Unlimited? What's their what's their mission statement? So here's how Ducks Unlimited works. Um, and this is what makes them different than like a Pheasants Forever Deer Hunters Associations. Ducks Unlimited has all these chapters spread out throughout the country to try to earn money. We all earn money through our banquets and everything, and then we ship that money to headquarters in Memphis, Tennessee. 
DU takes all the money as a whole and they spend it wherever the conservation needs to be done. So a lot of their, uh, even currently, but a lot of their early days, the majority of their money was spent in Canada because that's where they wanted to wrap up land and do wetland restoration and prairie land restoration for the nesting areas of most of the mm -hmm. waterfowl. Um, so a large portion of their money was spent in Canada, but also a, a fair amount in the U.S. and even down in Mexico. So basically that's what DU does. It collects money. It uses those funds to either purchase land outright or uh, or use it for restoration projects to clean up marshes, wetlands, uh, buffer zones, uh, prairie lands for nesting grasses and stuff like that. So it's, it's not that they're out there buying land for us to go hunt on. Um, there are some... Wet, uh, wildlife management areas and stuff that do you partners to purchase and get locked up um but not much that doesn't happen real often uh there might be a guy another thing that du does just having the the what is it called c503 you know um uh non non-profit organization stuff right so you can write off any donations you give to the company yeah like <laughs> you'd be amazed how many people in this country like Old farmer Fred doesn't have any kids. He just calls up to you and goes, hey, I'm probably not going to make it too much longer. You guys want my 80 acres when I die? Like hmm. people donate land to DU and then DU, they won't always take it. Like they won't just take it unless it's useful for ducks or if it's not going to be useful, like as it is natural for mm -hmm. ducks, they, they'll be honest and be like, here's the deal. We're just going to sell it. Like it's not, this isn't useful for con conservation. It's all agriculture land, no swamps or wetlands to buy it. So if you're cool, you can give it to us and then we'll find a way to sell it and use that money to do other things. So to go towards the same huh. thing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's what yeah, they do. Right Thank so, you. Yeah. So a lot of people go to these banquets and like, you know, we do pretty good. We have a good turnout. We're, we earn a lot of money and um, we don't take that money and then drive over to the other side of Wright County and buy a five acre parcel to yeah. duck hunt on. That's, that's not how it works. We, we ship it to the big guys that spend it where they see fit with all the biologists and everybody that they talk to and work with. And I don't know, it's hard to tell, man, duck numbers have gone down even since I started hunting in, in the nineties. I mean, in the nineties, I heard about how great the eighties were and, you know, in fifties and all that stuff. And, uh, it's, it's tough, man. I don't see the birds I used to see just driving around and in the ponds and in the spring as a kid, every little pond was full of, every kind of duck, you know, mm -hmm. heading north and you just don't see the same numbers. And so I've heard some people complain like, well, geez, what's DU, what's DU doing? Like, look, yeah. there's no ducks. Well, I'll tell you what, right now, there'd be a lot less if there wasn't DU since 1937. So is it, is it, are they all flourishing? No, but they sure as hell would be in the dumps a lot further if it wasn't for the acreage saved and wetlands restored. So do you think the, it's the flyway? Like back in back then, change. wasn't the flyway over Minnesota? Now it's obviously North Dakota. Is it moving farther west, like western parts, like before, like the the Badlands and stuff like that? I I guess I haven't gone out west, so I wouldn't know. Yeah. You know, think about the western Dakotas was in a giant drought last year, mm -hmm. so I don't know why the fly. You know, they should have sent it up this more. Way? Right? Yeah. You know, we definitely have drained a lot of lakes and ditching and all that stuff and flooded fields aren't there you know just mm -hmm. agricultural practices have eaten up a lot of that which definitely shifts a flyaway but just because a flyaway shifts that doesn't mean the numbers didn't shift yeah. with it you know what i yeah. mean so it's kind of a mix of both hmm. i don't know it's interesting yep i don't duck hunt but i still like going to support the cause because yeah there's a lot there's a lot more to it i mean they save land that has small rodents and, yeah. and songbirds and other migratory waterfowl that you don't hunt, you know? Maybe they're just putting all the money towards sandhill crane stuff. Mm. They must be. I don't know why in this state I can't shoot a sandhill crane. And they're all over. They're all over. <laughs> you can go up to northwest Minnesota, and there's this tiny, like, oh, here's 900 square acres you can shoot them on. But the rest of the state, off limits. Meanwhile, in north and south Dakota, you can blast away. And yeah. down south, you can shoot 20 a day. And can't. I don't know. Canada, you can shoot like 40, can't you? It's <laughs> yeah. something ridiculous. Yeah, Canada. Yeah, they're so, a little different. <laughs> so I got one one last question on Ducks Unlimited. So do they ever buy the land so that people that are part of Ducks Unlimited can then go hunt it? 
or or do they like buy land around a pond and then open it up for like no. to keep it like state kind of or they they're just not that i know of um just habitat and breeding to habitat is their goal they I've heard discussions that they'd like to do more to have hunter recruitment, right? A lot, like, if we don't have future hunters, mm-hmm. we're not going to have future conservationists. Yeah. So, like, there's a concern there, but as far as hunting access, I don't, it's it's not, it's not their repertoire, right? So, like, they specialize <laughs> in the conservation, right? There, there's a lot of other organizations that are trying to get hunter access, hunting land, public <laughs> land. Um, they will go. They 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 do have people that work with the legislatures to make sure that the uh, the uh, not the Clean Water Act but uh, legacy funds and stuff are available to continue to pay for CRP and stuff like that yeah. and and uh, access to public land but they don't like I said they don't truly go out there and try to acquire land for hunting <laughs> it does happen sometimes because uh, they'll partnership like I said yeah where hey we can we can buy a lot of this swamp but be cheaper if we partner up with this guy and make it a yeah. public land you know that makes sense i just <laughs> you saying repertoire <laughs> like, it literally was like instant light bulb to my ricky moment <laughs> <laughs> i had a ricky from the trailer park boys moment yesterday at the fucking gym <laughs> we were talking about the last episode with Derek and how he's shooting the you know he shot his turkey and then he get out of the blind and he go run and he'd stand on its neck what the hell did I say? And well, I, I put it in my notes. Let me pull up in my notes. I was like, Tell I it. have to write this down. So what Max said was, he ran over there and stood on the turkey's head till he disposed. And then I responded with, disposed? You mean like he threw it away? And Kenny goes, that's not the right word. And I said, so you meant expires. Or expired. And he goes, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> expired, not disposed. <laughs> he looks at me, he's like, okay, Ricky, go get your grade 10. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's the I, don't, I don't know what it is with the mornings when, when you're working out, if you're just so tired. But anything that happens, you just bust out laughing. Like, you can't stop laughing over the stupidest stuff. Our, our workouts consist of we lift weight, and then we either find something to bitch about hardcore between the next set, or we giggle yeah. nonstop between the next set. I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway, so, anyway, so yeah, do you banquet? No. I don't care if you go to Buffalo's or not. If you want to go to one, just go to one because it, it all goes to the same cause. You can win a lot of free stuff, too. There's yes, a lot of, There's a lot of people that – quit going to them because they have so much stuff because their wife said, if you go to another Ducks Unlimited banquet and you win a chair or whatever, he's like, you don't freaking bring it back here. I don't need another Terry Redlin on the wall. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah so people much that cool stuff. don't have room on their walls for prints because they've, you know, found so many. Ooh, there's some prints. really nice prints this year. <laughs> if you're a duck Minnesota. hunter, there's some good ones. Uh, where does this stuff come from? Out of curiosity. So, um, so Ducks Unlimited partners with Reed's uh, they've done it with Cabela's in the past. Um, Shields is a, is kind of a newer one that's really pushing to become a bigger sponsor of DU. And um, so a lot of the stuff and guns we get through those retailers, they give us a giant discount because all all the COs and stuff work out a deal. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we're probably going to order X amount of guns. Okay, we can give you a giant discount. Get them through this DU special account um, through those companies. So DU or we get them really cheap through them. So we can auction off and try to make money on them. Uh, so like if Mac here was to win a gun, sometimes we have the guns there in person. Sometimes you win a prize that's like a banner and then he can, oh, I'll pick uh, the seven mil off that banner and then he'll go up to Reed's to get it. Yeah. So you have to go to Reed's and Walker. Oh, yeah. Right and, then, yeah and then lots of other businesses donate stuff. Like we had a, a dead on arrival donated like four or five dozen DOA hats to us just out of nowhere. Oh, like, nice. oh use this at your banquet. So we use them as incentive prizes and stuff. And then um I don't know, I don't know exactly where it comes from, but we have like all these chairs and and furniture and stuff. Every year we have a different catalog of stuff in our DU calendar that we can order as a chapter. And so there's some committee a year in advance that finds people that produce these things mm-hmm. and order up X amount of them for chapters to buy in theory cheap yeah. and then auction offer sale or whatever. So sounds good. 
Sounds yep. good, man. E- Sounds exciting. like a good deal. Yep. Now we just got to talk Scott and the driving over here to go to the banquet. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that. That's <laughs> that sounds like an uphill battle. <laughs> uh, actually, elevation wise, it's all downhill from your place. So. <laughs> so it's on a Monday night. I actually wouldn't mind doing it, but it's on a Monday night in the middle of uh, kind of a busy time for me. So it's it's unfortunate because yep. it does sound great. I would. Yeah. I mean, what, what's not to love is sit around and eat steak and cordon bleu with your friends and uh, drink right. some beers and win a gun. I mean, yep. what? Who doesn't want to do that? But mm-hmm. it's just it's it's bad timing for me. But I would encourage everybody who has the ability to go to go. That sounds really good. Yeah, it's a good time. We've we've had multiple people ask, why don't you do it on a Saturday or Sunday or Friday night? You know, like there's one there's one guy that comes in. He usually spends a lot of money. He's noticeably generous. Let's just put it that way. And one night. <laughs> I, I went up and thanked him because he he won a shotgun, yeah. so he bought expensive raffle tickets for it, and he won the shotgun. And then he tells us, "Go ahead and auction it off." It's like, holy crap! You just spent money to win it, you won it, and now you're telling us to auction it off. And so, people were being a little cheap. So the gun was not auctioning. It was it was like an eight hundred dollar gun, I would say, and the bids were only they were kind of stalling out at like three fifty, four hundred, and uh, I was one of the bidders because that was a good deal. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he just stands up and he goes, thousand bucks, and he buys his own gun back, right? <laughs> and so, and it's just because he's trying to be generous yeah. and donate, right? And so I went up at the end and thanked him. I said, hey, thanks a lot. You know, really appreciate you being that generous. That's crazy. And he goes, man, if you held this on a Friday night when I could really tie one on, I'd really spend money. <laughs> <laughs> so we might have to hold a Friday event just for that guy. But um, anyways, long story short, they've done the weekend thing in the past. They don't get as good a turnout. I suppose, yeah, because people got a lot of stuff going on yeah, on the weekends. Yeah, people are busy on the weekends, and, and you know, yeah, people just are busy. And in this state, half the people in the summer or spring months have cabins, and they're gone Thursday night or Friday mm-hmm. morning. So, um, yeah, seems like Sunday nights and Monday nights are the best nights for, uh, for a decent turnout, oddly enough. It definitely makes that Monday in April go, you know, really slow at work because you're so excited to go yeah. to the banquet. Yeah, for sure. For it, sure. It's like when you have a fishing trip and you work – you know, two days and then you're leaving. Yep. Those two days go so slow. Right. You're just like, I can't wait for these two days to be over. So I'll be on the way up north hunting or fishing or whatever. And then all of a sudden you get there and you're like, hell yeah. Right. I'm a, I could see you. I don't know. It. We're kind of videotaping this episode. I got my border shirt on here. It's Looks kind of good. cold. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> but um, where can somebody get one of these shirts? Well, you, you can get you the know? shirt. You can get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where can you get it? I don't know if anybody must, listening. You like, must not have listened to the last podcast. I, I didn't yet. <laughs> I didn't yet. I just, never heard well, you say it again. Well, you have one, so clearly you know the answer to that. I, do know, I do know the answer. Uh, I don't think I don't I've think been doing all does. the talking. I don't think he uh, does know the answer because he probably goes to the link you sent him in a text message. Well, yeah, that, that is what I did. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did. You go to the link I sent. If you don't have the link, then you can go to uh, the Border Outdoors community page, and the link will be there in a post. It'll be uh, on uh, the Border Outdoors posts it on just about everywhere. But uh, I would say the easiest way would be to go to borderoutdoors.com, and uh, somewhere right under a picture of Seth, You'll see the Border Outdoors store or something. Go to the store. It says something about store. It does. It says the the Border Store. Yeah. Border Store. And click on that, and that'll take you over there. Uh, There's nine different designs up right now where you can get uh, T-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers. I think you can get a mouse pad. I think uh, notepads, grocery bags. You can get virtually everything. And uh, those designs will be up through April and May. I'm probably going to take some down. And by June, I'm going to post some new ones. Sweet. Yeah. When you, I was trying to show the guys at work and Google was up. When you type in border outdoors, don't type it in on like Google search, like actually type it in. What is it called? The URL or whatever, like the web address yeah. type in borderoutdoors.com. Cause if you type it in on border or border on Google, it pops up. It doesn't pop up like it should. Gotcha. Let's see Technology. what you're talking about. See, Border it just goes on Apple Podcast, Border Outdoors. Listen on uh, what the hell is Listen Notes? Apparently, we're there though. Spotify, <laughs> Pod Chaser. There sure is a lot of stuff. Border Outdoors books. I assure you, that's not us. And hey, <laughs> Border Outdoors slash blog. Uh, 
uh, sadly, that link is going to be broken. Don't go to that. You're right. It, it is pretty ugly. I'm going to have to do a little work with Google to get everything right. But if you go to B... Jesus. <laughs> get on it, Google. Yeah. Are you putting your microphone in your shorts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Type. Who types in borderoutdoors.com on Google? <laughs> uh, oops. 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 <laughs> but if you do that, boom, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Borderoutdoors.com, and then you have the Border Outdoors store. Outdoors store. And look at all these delightful designs. And on mine, I could even see what's sold. So that's uh, awesome. Seven. Seven of that new logo with the gray line around it. Ken's and I were talking one Saturday, came up with that just for the shirts. Uh, the uh, the European mount shirt is quite possible. Looks like the Sasquatch. Possible? Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like Ricky. Popular, you mean? <laughs> no, I meant possible. It is possible. And there it is. No, I meant popular. I guess I was pulling out whatever guy you're talking about. Uh, Ricky? Uh, Ricky. I guess I'm pulling that. Ricky so, yeah. Uh, but uh, kind of the cool thing is, is if you go and for people listening, this is probably really Annoying. exciting. So we'll move yeah. on. But you can click on the side. You can click on things like stickers and whatnot. And you can see there's stickers. There's blah, blah, blah. Go there. Uh, this is uh, probably not great radio. So I'm going to unshare <laughs> and say that's how you can buy Border Outdoors apparel. And I will just add the note that we do get a piece of every sale. So you're supporting the podcast by buying stuff. So... You're going to need a shirt anywhere. Why not support the podcast that you're quite obviously listening to? So, yep. Agreed. And it's a good time to tell people that we are on YouTube. Um, that last episode with with Derek and Tim and Scott and I, um, that's on YouTube. Not every episode is going to be on YouTube because we're kind of still figuring out, but I'd say a good majority of them. If there's three of us, they'll they'll be on YouTube. As long as Scott's along, because he's the one that knows how to do all that, just camera-wise. I don't know how to record it with just my camera. Yeah. So he's Scott up. has us sit on this weird, awkward leather couch, and <laughs> he casts us from time to time. Seth, <laughs> take your shirt off. Fine, I'm not doing it then. <laughs> so, yeah, go check out the YouTube channel. You can, like, Scott, like, uh, I think you did a post the other day, can look at our beautiful mugs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, we're not we're not much to look at. I'll I'll be honest. Border Outdoors is is definitely for, as Tim says, four faces for radio. But uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Some people like to watch stuff and whatever. Fine. I watch uh, what's that one? Uh, Drinking Bros. Oh yeah. Uh, when I, I I really only listen when Ross Patterson is on it. But um, I prefer to watch it. I just like to see facial expressions and shit. Mm -hmm. It's just more entertaining. So if it you're is. like that uh, and you want to see that kind of stuff, then by all means, we got a YouTube channel. Uh, we'll try to keep posting stuff on uh, on the social group so everybody can find it. Sounds cool. Cool. Well, like you said earlier, turkey season. Yep. Hunting season's back. It's back already, it's baby. Back. <laughs> so we just had, what, snow and sleet and rain oh. all this week, and I think the warmest day in the last seven days was – 44 something like that so a little chilly they were i saw tom strutting two weeks ago and going nuts and then this weather kind of shut things down but um next week looks pretty good so i think it'll start firing up just in time for opener which is the 16th, 16th. Have, you, have you seen April the 16th have you looked at your phone lately for weather no <laughs> it's supposed to be like a high of like 32 degrees or 33 degrees on opener oh is it yeah, yeah i don't look that i usually just look three or four days and yeah. hope it's the trend oh. so but oh, well. does weather uh does weather impact uh probably i assume but uh you know are the turkeys moving more when it's a little warmer is that is that a, have a big impact on the season yeah absolutely yeah big time um especially with the spring mating practices right of the toms and and the hen movement uh warm spring weather gets them fired up and active for much longer stretches uh cold weather they kind of hunker down they might stay in the roost way mm -hmm. longer if it's raining and stuff like that so yeah weather is a huge factor the nicer the weather the better the hunting yeah. for, for spring turkey i would say yep <laughs> plus cool. other other factors too such as um where they winter might be one thing, but once the weather's warm enough here in Minnesota and the way spring lines up is the greens all start popping, the new clover, the new this, that, that's going to affect where they want to go. So if spring's late, depending on where you usually hunt, it could totally change on if there's birds there or not, yeah. right? Um, a lot of guys with private acreage, if you got 
a 20 acre farm, they might not be there if the food hasn't started to come up for them, right? They might be staying down on the river bottom longer and stuff like that. So it, it definitely affects things big time. It's kind of up, up to each individual to know what they're looking for. So, so as a beginner, and I know you always give yourself crap because you're cursed at turkey hunting. Yeah, don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why we even brought you on. You're I can, I can find them. And I, <laughs> I can do everything up to the point of releasing the arrow. And then and then don't listen to me. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> but, like, I've never been. So what a, I, I have my spot picked out. I'm almost 90% sure I know where the roost is. Where where should I set up? Like you you've seen the property. Yep. And they're along the CRP field. They roost just inside the fence. I've been told that if they come down from the roost and they hop on the other side of the fence where you're hunting, say I want to set up in the CRP field with decoys or whatever, mm-hmm. then they'll they'll come over. But if they just go straight down on into like the the woods. Yep. that it takes a lot to try to get them Up and over to go the over the fence because they don't like to go over that fence. For sure. That is definitely the case. Now, there's, it all depends on the if it's tightly wound barbed wire that they can't walk or duck under. That's, that's totally different, yeah. right? So if it's truly a fence they can't walk through, then, yeah, it definitely is going to take more. I mean, the last turkey I effed up on, <laughs> he came <laughs> running right to the fence. And... He could have ducked under it fairly easy, but he did, like, he ran from 200 yards away because I had hens in my decoys. And so he ran from 200 yards away on a bead line, and when he got to that fence at about 25 yards or whatever it was, maybe not even that far, um, he did come to a stop and started strutting up and down that fence real quick. That's cool. So, like, had I given him more time before I, I sh- sent the arrow over his back, um, maybe he would have crossed, but it, it definitely slowed him up. That's for sure. Hmm. So fence lines, what I would do if you have permission to hunt both sides of it, yeah. I would hunt right on that fence line. Yeah. Or, you That's know what I mean? That's kind of what I was thinking. So. I was thinking even, because I've, they're, they roost not far from where my tree stand is. So like, it'd be cool to sit in the tree stand and take one out of the tree stand, but I'm going to set up a ground blind and I, I'm fairly confident on where they, where they're traveling. Like yep. I've seen them all the time, you know, in the fall. Um, I've seen them out in the field strutting. Uh, I've seen they're, they're just all over in there. So if I don't get one, it's my own. <laughs> sure. Know. Sure. But were you talking bow hunting? Yeah. I, I'll just tell you this right now. A good luck getting one out of the tree stand. Cause Uh-oh. these freaking things will see everything. I, I mean, it's not, not, it's not doable, but that'd be way harder than a ground. I'll blind. just be in a gully suit. Oh, you should sure. dress like a, a turkey. <laughs> just dress like a giant turkey up in the, up in the <laughs> tree. Have like you have you turkey. seen the, the there's YouTube videos of guys that like jewelry's big thing is because it's a the way I'm hunting is a bow only so okay. I can only use a bow but they have like a shotgun and they have the big you know the fan the the tail feathers yep and then there's a little cutout and they sit right behind that yep. with the gun and they get nice and close and pow <laughs> <laughs> I believe it man I believe it they'll fall for some silly stuff you gotta be careful though because there's dumb freaking people that oh, will shoot you I, if you're I, sitting behind that thing. Like, and and uh, I was watching a YouTube video last night, and it's I don't even remember his name, but he's supposed to be really good at turkey hunting. And all of a sudden, he's like, "Here, look at this." The guy's like, "Oh, what's that? A jelly bean?" And he's just about ready to throw it in his mouth. And the guy's like, "No, no, no!" no. He's like, "What? That's a turkey brain." What? Yeah, he had a turkey brain <laughs> that he had to a taxidermist, and they must have um, put it in a like freeze dried it. Yeah, or free, that's yeah. what I'm talking. About. Yeah, freeze dried it. And he's like, "Yeah, right here." It's just this little, it looks like a jelly bean. Because they almost freaking ate that thing. <laughs> That's the whole size of their brain. And he's like, they're dumb as hell, but their eyes are so good. That's, I mean, that's right. what they depend on. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely what it is. So, it's, it's, oh man, it, it is fun. I'm really excited to try to get back out. And I, and I, and I think it's funny before even hearing, I've never turkey hunted or even wanted to, but you guys saying, oh, they have such good eyesight. I remember sitting deer hunting the ground blind and them just walking right up to the blind and i'm moving around with my phone and doing all this and they just like, that, yeah that's the when you're in a blind it's totally di- like yeah but it's if, so weird how they don't see you in a blind like you're moving the windows are open like yeah. they don't seem to care i've had them that one hen almost stuck her head in my window <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> then she turned around and jumped on my hen decoy. You know, so like they can see any little movement or twitch if you're sitting in the bushes and they just freaking sprint. They just run, right? <laughs> but then they freaking walk up to an inflatable, like printed hen decoy and start jumping on it. And they're like, yeah, this is normal. <laughs> this chick's just let me beat the crap out of her. She's all squishy. Like, I, 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 I can't explain it. You have permanently ruined the sight of turkeys running away <laughs> by, by the South Park reference. Have you ever yes. seen that video or the South Park game? <laughs> There's a video of it. I don't know if you can pull it up, but no. it is absolutely hilarious. Where they're just, blah, 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 just yes. like running like this. Google turkeys from the South Park video game. Oh if you Google God. that, you'll see some scenes of these turkeys in that video game running, and that's literally what they oh look like. Oh my God, it's so funny. So now, like, I was out shed hunting the other day, and I saw them turkeys. That's literally what I pictured because that's how they run. Yeah. And then you're telling your story, and I can't help but giggle because you're like, <laughs> yeah, this thing came straight out of the. the South Park just 200. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, that's loud. Hang on. If if I think I mentioned this last spring when we were talking with the Brotherhood gang. Yeah, but, we were. Uh, yeah, Google the video game. It's right here. Scott. It was got so it classic, classic when it came out because these kids just run around town with snowballs, and then like they'll pee on the snowballs to make them like extra powerful, I guess, and throw it at turkeys and people and. Yeah. Anyways, the turkeys yeah, are trying to take over the town. So <laughs> <laughs> the way the things are. Oh, he's getting his ass kicked by the turkeys. <laughs> yeah, you go into panic mode when the screen turns red. <laughs> oh right. man, it's a good time. Just just let it play, Scott, and you'll be able to see it. It's oh my god, it's so funny. But speaking of South Park, real side ta- tangent. I started watching it because I never ever watched it before. And I was watching one of like the newer episodes and there's the whole, you know, Russia thing. And Mr. Garrison comes in and I can't remember what his boyfriend's name was, but he's like, oh yeah, me and Gary, you know, blah, 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 blah. And because he always does it. He talks to the class about his boyfriend and he's like, kids, what's your problem? And they're like, well, you know, we're not worried about Gary. We're worried about Putin. He's like, Putin. Well, I mean, I pulled out real slow and there was no Putin. Oh, <laughs> like, <"What> the fuck? <laughs> That show has no oh. boundaries. Oh my god! And then like back when they're doing the 2016 election between Trump and Hillary. Yep. And how Hillary was called the Turd Sandwich. What? Yeah, her name was Turd Sandwich, and Trump was douche. So you had to pick between the douche, <laughs> oh, and the sure. giant douche, or Turd Sandwich. And then like it was just like you know modern times. The one guy, I think it was Kyle's dad, like, I can't believe you're you're voting for turd sandwich. For you. <laughs> and then some of the guys, I can't believe you're voting for the giant douche. And just, oh my god, that's hilarious. I man. don't know how they can still get away with all that stuff they do on They're that. They're the only show that still does. It's the best. And they have 25 seasons. Yeah, yeah. I I remember as a kid going to like the the county fair or whatever the the Buffalo days here. And like throwing darts at balloons and oh whatever I it's a letter P I get a picture so I picked out like it was Kenny dead with rats eating him and I said oh my god they killed Kenny right <laughs> and I uh, brought it home and my mom was like you're not keeping that you can't keep that cartoon dead kids and it says oh my god on it like oh yeah, oh, yeah. so I had to throw it away right away <laughs> I remember thinking that show looks awesome <laughs> you were doing the little thing like this and remember and it reminded me of a story well, well, so what do you do oh you like yeah, you're like tw- I'm twirling like my putting fingertips. my my fingertips together, and it was when you're talking about the Macho Man, <laughs> Randy <laughs> Savage, with the freaking I am the cream, I am the cream, <laughs> the cream rises to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Google, uh, we're telling everybody to Google everything today. Google Macho Man, Randy Savage, and the cream speech. Oh, oh it's it's classic. It's classic. <laughs> but you'll uh, never go into a cafe and not pick up the little creamers again without saying the stuff I'm he the says. I'm the cream. <laughs> <laughs> and start throwing it at your buddies. Oh, too funny, man. Scott, you ever? Uh, you've never turkey hunted. Have you ever eaten uh, wild hang turkey? On. He's oh. doing the Randy Savage. Uh, never mind. I'm not going to mess with that. I was oh, trying to look it up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. You're good. I was just going to ask if you've ever eaten wild turkey. I've I've had it once, but it was a <laughs> long time ago. It was, I'll tell it's you tough. what. On my 21st birthday, um, this is not what you asked. <laughs> on my 21st birthday, uh, everybody, of course, buying me shots. And I got all dressed up in like the 70s, like legit 70s leisure suit, big orange butterfly collar shirt. Sweet. And I go down to the bar and everyone's handing me shots and I get like the legit three wise men where you do like a Jack and a mm-hmm. Jose and a 
Oh. Whatever. And then somebody handed me a shot and I just took it down and immediately turned like green. And one of the guys looked, grabbed an empty pitcher, stuck it in front of me, and I filled it. Oh. And, uh, and I said, what the hell was that? And he said, the name of the shot is a sweaty butthole. <laughs> and it's half wild turkey, half Tabasco sauce. Oh, oh my God. Most of, I still, to this day, if I smell Tabasco, I get nauseous. That, that is, is the disgusting. closest I've ever come to wild turkey. I don't think anyone's actually, like, legitimate, like, bird meat giving me wild turkey. I, no, I've never had it. All I've ever had is the is the liquor, and it didn't sit well. I'll tell you this right now: it's even if it's tough, it's a lot better than that shot. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Nasty. I know. Um, Paul shot one, our my uncle, and he was he was turkey, was turkey hunting up at his property. He shot one, and he brined it. I don't know what he did, and I'm not. I don't like turkey. Like Thanksgiving, what? Christmas, I don't eat turkey. I ham, strictly ham guy. And he's like, here, try this turkey. And I ate it. And I'm like, oh, my good. God. It was so good. He, he had like a little, he didn't have like a big Traeger smoker or anything at that time. He just had like this little orange bullet. I don't even know what it is, smoker. Okay. And he put it on there. And well, I need to get that recipe because it was so freaking good. It made me go back to turkey. I still don't like it. But I'd eat that. Sure. It was freaking good. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm excited to eat it. Like the guy that cooked up before hadn't done many of them so i i mean this was probably 10 years ago at least so there's so many articles on how to do it without yeah. it being tough and stuff so i'm excited to try I, I don't know how much meat i'll get off the little jake that i finally end up shooting, i know but whatever a guy from work was talking about how way back in like i don't remember where it was but he said that they shot a turkey and they cooked it and he's like you gotta brine it i'm like why he goes Oh, we were all drunk one night, and we decided that we were going to eat this turkey after we just killed it, you know. And he goes, we just threw it on the grill. And he goes, it was the worst thing I've ever <laughs> ate in my freaking life. <laughs> he's like, I was like a high schooler back then. I, yep. I think he's like 50-something years old now. He's like, I would, I still haven't eaten another wild turkey again. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's so freaking, it's so tough. It's like the skin just turned to rubber. He's like, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, that does not sound like the way to do yeah. it. So I think every time I smoke... Um, fish or poultry, I end up doing a brine on it. Mm -hmm. um, just cause I smoked salmon once and I let it, I put the brine on it and then you're supposed to like let it dry out and I let it dry out too long. So it had like this weird, I don't know, like thickness on the outside. Flavor was good. Smoked flavor was really good, but I screwed up the salmon. But if I do like chicken or turkey or anything like that and you just throw it in, you know, like a, like a five, not a five gallon, whatever, a bag. And then you put water in there and you put like a cup of sugar and a cup of salt in there and you let it sit overnight. It's just, I don't know why it's better. I mean, if somebody actually knows why it's better. It like breaks down the meat, doesn't it? Well, yeah, the salt and stuff yeah. should help. Yeah. It breaks mean, down the meat. Yep. Well, yeah. and just in, it, like infuses it with all that. With all, yeah, well, yeah. With all the flavor. Keeps it from drying out. And then, and then I'm sure the outside still dries out to the point, but internally you still have all that moisture. Yeah. So. Going back on like, you're talking about shooting a, a Jake. Yep. So people listening to it, listening to this, opening day is only going to be what four days away, three three four days away. So for anyone that doesn't know this, how to tell the difference between a Tom and a Jake is there's two things for sure. A Jake's beard won't be very long. It'll kind of just stick straight out like a little wiener. Like it, doesn't, <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't like, it doesn't. Not that I know what that looks like. But, <laughs> yeah. I see it every day. Uh, but like a, a Tom will have a legit beard where it'll, you know, it'll start yeah. falling down. And then also a Jake on the, the fan, the tail feathers, it's either the two or the three top ones will be longer than the rest than the because rest the, the, the other ones haven't fully grown grown yep. in so if you shoot a turkey and it's got a nice beard and the tail feathers are all the same length that's a tom if the three or two on the very top are longer that's a jake right. nothing wrong with shooting a jake it's no it's just a younger it's just male a younger, bird yeah so, it's yeah. still a bird but you cannot shoot hens in minnesota Correct. in the spring so don't be shooting make sure it's a jake yep or a tom but there is some hens that do have beards. It's yes, there are bearded hens, but mm. you'll know the difference. Yeah. You will know the difference when you, if you've Googled enough pictures of turkeys, jakes, and hens. Yeah. There's there's 
a noticeable difference. The Jakes won't have as red of a head as the other Toms yeah. will. Um, it, it's it's crazy. So like they're red, their heads are all red, right? Till you shoot them, then they die and they go blue and then they just kind of go colorless. Like weird. It's all from the blood flow because they're that, all Is that when up. they dispose? Uh, yeah, once they dispose, <laughs> once they dispose, their heads <laughs> change colors. <laughs> oh man, you uh, yeah. <laughs> dispose it. Dang it, Ricky. But and uh, what is it like? Because the one thing I'm looking forward to the most is obviously I want to be successful and shoot a, a Tom. Mm-hmm. You know, you shoot for the highest you yeah. can get. But what's it like when you're out there and you hear that first gobble back? You get super excited. You're like, holy smokes. Like, it's real. Like, they really do this, first yeah. of all. And then when you, it, it can be frustrating. Like, it goes, it, it doesn't take long to be like, this is so awesome. I'm going to kill one for sure. To, mm-hmm. Well, the fricker's not even moving. Like, why isn't he coming? You know what I mean? So it, it can turn frustrating. You just have to try to enjoy it. And then um, the weirdest thing is when they start to do it and it's not even quite light, then you know it's going to be a good morning. Like, when they're firing off before the sun's even up. Like, like, like I don't mean it's pitch black out. Oh, I mean, yeah, like, right before like, sunrise. Yeah, right before sunrise. If they're barking off already, you, it should be a pretty good first hour or two of the day. It is so much fun. Isn't it that's uh, a way that you can find the roost is like right before the sun comes up, you do the owl call. Yep. And then they'll yeah. in the tree and then you can locate the roost and don't hunt right underneath the roost. But right. Like then you can situate yourself. You're like, okay, they're there. Um, You can look at your onyx or whatever. But if you've done your scouting beforehand, you should, you kind of have it in your head. Right. If this is where they're roosting, this is where I'm going to set up private land or state land. Yeah. And if, if you roost them, and you don't know where they came from. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, they're there. There's the roost. What I would do is I'd go as close as you can the next morning, get within. I mean, you can get surprisingly close depending on the lay of the land if you go in there early enough. Get in there. Get fairly close. I don't know. It all depends on the scenario. But yeah. try to get within at least a couple hundred yards yep. for sure. And hopefully you're in a spot where you can somewhat visualize, see them. But yeah. if not, not a big deal. Get up there. You'll hear them come down out of the roost. Start your calling sequences. If they don't come to you, hope, pay attention to what it sounds like they're doing. You'll hear them either head to the south or to the east. And then don't don't get up and start chasing them. If you have time, don't do that. If yeah. you can hunt the next day, then leave them alone. And the next morning, come in and get to that whatever side they headed. Get to that side of them. So you're naturally, hopefully, in their their yeah. normal moving pattern. And then, and then the next day you go to that side, then they go to the side that you were on. <laughs> easily, easily could happen. And if they do that to you three days in a row, then you just run at the tree in the middle of the night and you stab them with a stick. Cause, <laughs> yeah, they don't deserve to live if they're pulling that crap. So, yeah. You can't shoot a turkey in the roost. So don't shoot a turkey out of the tree. The so f- just let yeah. you guys know if they roost early, I don't believe you're supposed to shoot them up out of that tree. So Yeah. Um, it's like, shoot, it's just shooting in the air. You don't, you're not supposed to shoot in the air at all. Arrows, right. anything. The first time I ever, <laughs> well, yeah, but you shoot, some guys are out there with a shotgun, right? And yeah, it's like bird but, hunting. So I'm just, yeah. you know, I, the tendency would be like, Oh, he's just sitting right there. I'll just poke him out of the tree. You all yeah. more often than not, they're roosting right at the end of shooting time and stuff, mm-hmm. or they're out of the tree before shooting time more often than not. But still, if you stumble across one, it's legal. Yeah. Don't take, avoid the temptation. Yes. <laughs> I got that right. Uh, the, it's kind of embarrassing, but I didn't even know that turkeys roosted in trees until like a couple of years ago when I was hunt, deer hunting and all of a sudden here comes like 30 turkeys. Burp, 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 burp. Yep. And then all of a sudden straight up they went and I'm like, what the? F-? Yeah. And then the next morning I was going back hunting. So I went back in and I'm sitting in my ground blind and boom, here they all pop down. Like down. Like within they like won't move at night. 30 yards, 20 yards, just straight down. I'm like, God, I could just smoke a turkey yeah. right now. Yeah, they won't get down at night unless something really is really, really getting after them. Like owls will just swing by and grab one. <laughs> like, like, And the rest are like, okay, well, he's gone. Like, <laughs> like they don't just like, oh, everybody leave. Like, well, It takes a few to get plastered before they'll start like getting out of there and so. it's it's sketchy like it's scary when they come out of the tree and you don't know what's going on yeah, and loud. they're just gliding it's just just like this gen- it, it's, <laughs> it's not like a, a glide it's bird. literally like they're just like oh, i'll just fall out of this tree <laughs> and i'll put my wings out halfway down maybe like 
<laughs> it looks like Jenny O turkeys with feathers falling out of trees. <laughs> it's and it makes so much noise. But like, like you hear sticks snapping and <laughs> like it's clumsy. But if they go across the field, because I've seen them go across the field, and you're just like, what is that? <laughs> it looks like a giant eagle just <laughs> <laughs> pterodactyls coming. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, man. Get out turkey hunting. Like, mm-hmm. what do you got to lose? I think it's twenty, whatever it was, twenty some bucks. I think for like twenty five bucks. Yeah, I, got, yeah. I don't even remember. I bought it with my fishing license the other day. But uh, buy a take, get out a couple mornings. I'm actually hoping to get Claire out in the blind. She's all excited after shooting that grouch. Was the that, grouch? Yeah, that grouch last year. <laughs> so she's excited to go. Out. I've been chasing her around the the house with my diaphragm mouth call. Just and she just thinks it's so funny. And so yeah, she's all excited. To, uh, to go out and track turkey hunting. She can watch videos and eat snacks. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried at all about trying to kill a turkey with her in the blind. Like, it'd be easier than with than whitetails. Yeah. I'm sure of that. But anyways, hopefully the weather gets nice and we can go out and enjoy it. Is that a train outside your office, Scott? It is. Are you watching Choo Choo videos? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, well, I, the, the, you can probably hear it better than me. I got noise-canceling headphones on. And so I can't hear really anything, but there is that whoever comes by my office on that train must be new and he must really like that horn because he'll just <laughs> lay on it for like 30 seconds straight. And uh, I actually heard him coming like a week ago and I literally walked outside and just looked at him and like put my hands up and I was like, you know, <laughs> like and he did is that really well. necessary? You're going over a river. Are you warning the fish? <laughs> What's the problem? And, uh, and he, know, did, whatever. Did the, he did the Seth Wilkes and looked at you straight, straight in the face. <laughs> and threw a donut at you. Uh, <laughs> here you go, fatty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't. Yeah, but uh, that seems probably about the time that they would be going by. So whatever. Nice, nice. I was gonna. There's something I was gonna say about turkey hunting. Um. um oh, someone said that. When you set up your ground blind in your in your decoy, that whatever way you think the turkey's coming, make sure that you're not directly behind the decoy. So you kind of want to be off to the side. So um, it's kind of for people listening, it's yep. it's hard to to say, but you don't want to be behind it because if they're looking at the decoy, then they can see that you're like your silhouette or whatever behind the decoy. So oh, like sure, if sure. you move, they're walking up to the, yeah, they're going their face eyes, to face to the decoy. Yeah, because right. their eyesight's looking at the decoy, and yes. if you're behind it, yep. then if you move, they'll be able to pick up your movement. Yep. So they say put it at like a 45-degree angle or stay off to the side where you think it's going to be coming so that it's pretty much going parallel to sure. the decoy, and it's all focused on that. That way you can get away with a little bit of movement if you're not in a ground yeah, blind. Yeah, I would agree with that. I never thought of that. I thought that was pretty interesting. <clears throat> the other thing is I like – some people, I don't know, man, I always have almost always had the decoys for sure within 15 yards. That's Yeah, and that like, was another thing. They said sometimes they stop short right. of the decoy. So the guy said he sets his decoys up no farther than like 12 yards. Yeah. It's like 8 to 12 yards. So then if they stop 10 yards short, they're you still, still got like a 25-yard shot. Yep. Yep. Plus, if they're being stubborn and you're having to call them in, a lot, you know, mm-hmm. if they're at that 80 yards and you're still having to tweak them in a little bit, like they've got decent hearing, you know, yeah. decent hearing. So like they could pick out like, Hey, that, that chirping's not coming from that inflatable hen decoy. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Maybe they're just lonely. I could be man. Poor Tom's <laughs> all lonely. So, <laughs> um, oh, and then I want to talk about shooting. I know we've kind of touched it before, but I'm getting like anxiety if I get something in and cause oh. I like ain't, ain't, I'm going to, I'm like, I remember I said I wanted to do a headshot, but yep. I'm not nearly that good at shooting a bow. So I'm going to try body and I, I just, I don't want to miss. Sure. Cause I'm not uh, people watching. I'm not that small of a guy, so I can't pull a Derek butcher with my shirt off and run out <laughs> of the blind and go, you know, find it. So like, I want to make sure I make a good shot, yep. but I still know I'm going to have to go after it. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, like they do die on impact, even with bow shots. If if it's a if it's the right shot, but yeah. Quite often, they it's a it's a fatal hit, but they're still just kind of stunned. Mm-hmm. And then, ten seconds will go by, and they'll get up and start running. So yeah, <laughs> I, 
definitely go out there and grab that thing as soon as you can. When you when you turkey hunt, do you try to avoid shooting them when they're strutting, when they're all fanning? Oh no, I, I don't. You like, just, if there's but, one, if there's dude, one, I've never in... killed one. Don't ask me how I shoot them. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you shot at them. I shot. I I shot one while it's strutting. Shot one while it's just you know casual feathers laid back. Yeah. Like what's going on? Um, trying to think. Shot the ball. I've, I've never done the going away shot. It's always been broadside shots that I've had, either strutting or relaxed phase. It, you know. And that was because you didn't get on them right away, right? Right. Didn't so, you? You left a little time, and well, they. Yeah, one of them I shot low. The first one that ever came running in, a Jake shot low, took off some apparent belly feathers. Right, just yeah. shot way too low, and um. So just got some feathers. He was good to go. The other one looked, it looked and felt like a good shot. Um, and he. <laughs> Didn't he fly? Didn't he? Yes. Uh, Cause you're in South Dakota, right? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. God dang it. I'm trying to, I thought there was one in between that first Jake and the other one. Well, the one I'm thinking of looked like a good shot, felt like a good shot. But for some reason I was really skittish to like, get after it right away yeah. so i just kind of let him walk over to like this little group of pine trees and i walk and i left him and then um i waited like six hours oh because at that time i had two tags mm -hmm. in south dakota and uh I, I waited i was like i'm just gonna hunt the rest of the day in this spot they were traveling through there all the time and waited six hours walked around freaking thing was laying there with his head on his back like in this little ditch gully he wasn't under the trees where i thought he'd be i was like what the frick so for some, um, it's kind of steep. So, I, and I knew that, and I lost a bird. I, I can't even remember now, but I lost a bird at one point, or one of the guys did, where it jumped and and flew, and um, so I went to the downhill side, started coming up, and there he is, laying in this drainage, head on his back. I'm like, he's freaking dead. I'm at 30 yards. I'm like, I'm gonna get to like 20. I'm just gonna shoot him again. I don't even care because <laughs> I don't want to lose another turkey. And like, I'm to about 24, 23 yards, and. I'm like, oh, I, one more step to my right, and I'll have a clear lane. I'll just smoke his dead, his disposed body. <laughs> I'll just shoot his disposed body with another arrow. And uh, I'm not kidding, man. I took one more stop, a step to my right, and a little snap of a little twig under some leaves, and a freaking head shot up. And that, oh. that, that, I'm telling you, his wings were out, and his head was back and sideways, like dead. And his head shot up, and he turned sideways, and his stupid eyes looking at me. And then I'm like, I'm like shocked. Like, I don't know. I should just let the arrow fly. But I was like, where do I aim? His head's up. I'm like, oh, my God. Like panic mode. And then uh, and then he stands up and just freaking raptor speed takes off running and finds this stupid little knoll and jumps and just sails into oblivion. <laughs> Never freaking saw that bird again. Like, it's six hours, man. I don't care if I just uh, shot the dick off a button buck. <laughs> like, Six hours. That's a specific so? reference. Did what? that happen? <laughs> <laughs> you think that'd be enough to weaken him up where he doesn't do that, you know? And then uh, zombie turkey. You don't want it anyway. <laughs> <What> a... <laughs> yeah. And then all the other ones I just flat out missed. Shot the blind yeah. and shot the fence and <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you on this. Year. I'm killing one this spring. We're getting you on. I. It's gotta happen. I got, we got. We have three different private properties to go to. So. And they all hold turkeys. Right. And there's state land that I know of with a lot of turkeys. Yeah. So, so maybe we'll just go get a state land turkey. Let's do it. I freaking really wanted to go out on an opener. But, but yeah, you're not going to be around. Nope. I got to go head north to the in-laws for Easter weekend. Is it always on Easter weekend, turkey opener? Quite often, yeah. Is it? Yep. Kind of like how uh, fishing openers usually on Mother's, Mother's Day, Day weekend. Yep. Doesn't Scott, Easter move around? Isn't Easter like? It's always the third weekend in is it right. April, it, isn't it? Maybe I'm thinking of spring break. I'm like it always it always moves well, around. But. I remember a couple of years ago someone saying, "Oh, Easter's late this year." Yeah, you always hear Easter's earlier, Easter's late. So yeah, maybe you are right. It, it definitely moves around. It's some. It's like the third Sunday after friggin' some moon phase or something crazy. Like it, it definitely moves. But I think it has to do with Jesus. Lent. Mm, that's what it is. I think there's something to do with Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah. If Jesus comes out and sees his shadow in February, they change the that's date. It. That's what it is. Yes, that's, that's what, what it, it is. is. Not the groundhog. Punks huh? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, speak, speaking of groundhog, uh, Nick, who, Nick Virgin, who we had on the episode, yeah. he put a, a, a video on Facebook. 
And all I saw was him saying, yep, that's about right. And <laughs> it was this guy sitting on his back, and this chick is, you know, by, down by his legs undoing his pants. Oh, no. And and I was like, all right, let's watch this video. What's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, like, right when she starts to unzip it, it's Bill Murray from Groundhog Day with the alarm going off, just pounding <laughs> on the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I died when I saw that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's good. That is funny. That's so funny. Yeah, shout out to Nick. That was fun talking to him, you know, a few oh, weeks yeah. back. And I, I'm telling you, I can't drive by one of those green garbage bags now <laughs> without thinking, can they get the straps together? Yeah, he's good. He's good. Like, it's like he'll make it. Yeah, it's, oh, it's the best. But uh, I'm going to have to get a hold of him because I'm going to need to get one of those here pretty soon and be like, hey, yep. now you know where I'm at. Yep. So. Alrighty. Well, shoot. Well, hopefully we get some turkey hunting updates here in the next few weeks. And yep. people get out, bring your cameras with you. It's spring activity, man. There's everything's running around and juiced up now that winter finally seems to be letting go. So yeah. Yep. So, well, let's wrap it up there with uh, Border Outdoors. I'm Mac. I'm Seth. I'm Scott. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye. Thank you, Mom. Thanks for listening to the Border Outdoors podcast. Follow us on Instagram. Be sure to join, follow, and share the Border Outdoors Facebook community page. Please leave us a five-star rating on Apple, Spotify, or your preferred podcast hosting site. Be sure to tune in next week to see what the guys are talking about.